everyone and welcome back so my people more reactions concerning what showore said yesterday the hidden secret memo from nigeria government against the Igbo that if he take charge don't give Igbo's position don't give them opportunity if not they're going to overrun you so ever since then a lot of people have been reacting and this particular one is from aisha yusuf as well as one of our brother so if you're an Igbo person and you are surprised of what uh, Shewore said yesterday, which means you are living in deny because this is not really new, honestly. So if you're an Igbo person, you're supposed to be aware of your position in Nigeria. So it's really not new and it's really not shocking, honestly. And also it's not surprising because we all are aware of it. When people come and say that uh, Igbo man will never be a president of Nigeria and also you see it playing out Tell me how many Igbos are in a key position in Nigeria. Like, you cannot even find an Igbo person in any juicy position in Nigeria. So, it is really not shocking or new to the Igbo. So, let me allow you guys to listen and hear what they said in this video. I'm going to be right back. What we just heard just now did not start today. It started right from the days of the colonialists who were so afraid of the Igbo people and how they were like, you know, achievers and could do a whole lot. The Igbo community was one place where that was so egalitarian that you didn't have, you know, some ruling class, some whatever, that it was democratic in its setup. And that's why things like the direct, uh, the indirect rule couldn't work there. Unlike in the northern part of the country, amongst the houses where you had complete indirect rule. So whatever the colonialists wanted to do, all they needed to do was to walk through the emirs and district heads and whatever and get it done. In the, in the West, amongst the Yorubas, they did a combination of direct and indirect rule. They could still go through uh, the Obas, but not as much as they could do in the northern part of the country. But when it came to the Igbos, they, of course, they didn't meet that system where you had some people who were chiefs or born into royals and their word was everything. They made a place where there was democracy, where people are going to be questioned. And, and people had, everyone had a voice as long as they were able to prove, uh, themselves. That's why, of course, you see that proverb where they say a child who was, washes his hand very clean will be able to dine with the kings. And for that, the colonialists feared the Igbos. And you've seen, there are a lot of, you know, memos out there. There are some videos out there where they did everything possible to ensure that an Igbo man did not succeed, uh, after when they were living, even though you could see the most qualified candidate at that time was an evil person. So back forward to today, fast forward to today, this sentiment still goes on. And a lot of people have been, you know, uh, have been brought up and fed with that narrative. And that's where it has continued to take them. So the question for me that I always like to ask is that how far have we been without the Igbos? This secret memo that Showare talked about, in what way has it helped Nigeria? Hasn't it reached a time when we said, okay, probably because we have kept the Igbos after the we key position, might be why we are going through what we are going right now? Let me even take for example, I remember a few days ago, I was digging through my Twitter handle, and I do that a lot. And part of the things that I saw, I saw a particular tweet where I was saying that, when we are talking about educationally less developed area, we tell them to bring two marks and all of that. But when it comes to job, you find that all of a sudden, especially public jobs, the educationally less developed areas are the ones who are getting some high whatever job. Then the ones that is that they are asked, the educationally advantaged area, I don't even know how they became educationally advantaged, they're the ones that are asked to bring the highest marks. But when it comes to employment, you see them having the least numbers there. Shouldn't it be that the people with the educationally uh, advanced, not advantage, okay, I should use advanced region that are required to bring higher marks should be the ones that we will employ more and put them in our public enterprises so that they will work? Then you know that it is indeed meritocracy that is going on. But it's never the case. Just go and check anywhere that there's going to be. They are using cut-off mark. And the region that is always asked to bring the highest number, you understand, it's the Southeast region. You see them sometimes, for example, where they are asked to bring 150, 160, 170, 
Some other states are asked to bring two, three. Unity exam. If you think that's not right, uh, I'm, maybe I'm making this up. Just go and check it and see. It's very funny. Some like five, three, four, five, ten, twenty, fifty, seventy. 10, 20, 50, 70. You understand? But then when you now go at the end of the day, where jobs are, are that, like for those that we had, institutions and others, those particular people who are asked to bring the highest amount of numbers, you don't see them there. So doesn't that tell us something? That we have indirectly or directly shot ourselves in our foot just because we don't want the evil person to be in position of power. <laughs> How foolish can that can one be? We cut our nose to spite our faces just because you feel that some people are successful and so or you don't want them to continue their success or be more successful. Well, here we are in Nigeria. Every one of us is suffering. We are all suffering from that mediocrity that has affected uh, everyone. And for those of you that were brought up on generational hatred, don't like evils, hate evils and whatever, how has that helped your life? How has that reduced the cost of carrying the market? If you're not ready to unlearn and relearn, Omo, are you even fit to be in this 21st century? In what way does it help anybody? We are all human beings. At the end of the day, what we should be striving for is people that will get in and do the right thing. And so, we can go on to do what we want to do without having to, you know, all suffer. But there is a particular uh, person who is one of the supporters of uh, Mr. Peter B. He was actually the director general, or was it the big tent, I think? Uh, he's from Subquarto State, if I'm not mistaken. There's always one thing he, he says. He says for him, as far as he's concerned, the person, if he was to, if he's based on tribe, and the tribe that he would trust most with the leadership of Nigeria is actually the Igbo tribe. Why? He said because they do business all over Nigeria. So it is in their best interest for the whole Nigeria to work. An Igbo man will move goods from Sokoto to whatever part of Nigeria, from Meduguri, from Benin, from Gusau, from wherever it is, he will move those things as long as there's business. So he needs the roads to work. And then he fits the roads all over the country. He's not going to concentrate on one place or whatever. And so for him, that's why he, that's part of the campaign that he always uses. That indeed, it's very important to do that. But hey, most people base their this thing on, oh, we were told this way. Like they will come out and tell you that Igbo coup. How many of them were Igbos in that coup? All tribes were in that coup. And then somebody, because you've been told something that happened something, since something years ago or hundred years ago, you are still holding on, on, on or you are still holding on to it. Meanwhile, you are suffering today. Ah, uh, my people say go be a more. Say a foolish person is not something a person will give back to. Even if they talk, say you know, get sense. You know, if you get your own sense and ask yourself, has the tribalism helped anyone? In any way. It hasn't. So why do we still sit down and allow ourselves to be boxed with a secret memo? Who memo help? A secret memo has leaked and it has vilified me. I have been vindicated over what I have been shouting and shouting for a very long time. I have been saying this, I have been shouting at the top of my voice, letting Nigerians and my Igbo brothers know that their position in Nigeria is threatened and you see many people want to gaslight you and say all sort of things and make sure to, to cover to cover what they are doing secretly a secret memo has been leaked now Shore in a news report said Nigeria must break up for Igbos to survive that means we are on life support in Nigeria Nigeria must break up for Igbos to survive. That is coming from a Yoruba man, a Southwesterner, an Oduduwa man. This one is not coming from Namde Kanu or Samarekpa or IPOB or Wazurike. It is a, a Yoruba person who is sincere. He is a sincere man. He has come out to say that Nigeria must break up for Igbos to survive. That is why we are calling for balkanization. We are making sure that we are pressing hard that this system will change. An Igbo man's destiny is not safe under this current constitution. What constitutes Nigeria today is a threat to the destiny and to the future of an Igbo man. 
And I've said it over and over again, and I'll repeat it. An Igbo man cannot survive in today's Nigeria. Looking at the gang, the gang up from the north to the southwest, they prefer to use a south-south person in quote than a core Igbo man. They prefer that an Igbo man is put on their under their feet, and they do it with manipulations, with propaganda, with lies. They are not. They do it through the back door. They don't make it obvious. But now, Shore has come to bust their bubble. In a podcast, he made his revelation. It, it is the same Shore that said that the hatred Nigeria has for the, the Igbo man is in their blood. Let me read this. Former presidential candidate of the African Action Congress, Omoyele Shore, has alleged that there is a secret memo in the government to be careful of Igbos. He stated, that the Igbos can't thrive in the current setup of the country, stressing that Nigeria must break up for them to survive. Let me read. He alleged there's a secret memo in the government to be careful of the Igbos. As an Igbo man, he wants to, you want to take get a contract. They will make sure that they, they distill you. And okay, let's look at a, a graduate from different university, graduate from UN and Nsuka graduate from Unilag and graduate from Ahmad Bello University. They are seeking for a job opening in Abuja Ministry of Finance. Let's say that one from UNN had first class. The one from Unilag has sec second class upper. Why the one from Ahmad Bello University had maybe third class? Don't you think that the one from Ahmad Bello University that is less qualified has more chances of getting jobs? Graduates in Nigeria, from the north and the southwest, as of today, they have much more le leverage than graduates from the southeast when it comes to federal government employment and everything. So there is a there is a deliberate act to keep the egos out of anything good happening in, in Nigeria. And when the egos start crying out, somebody will come and say uh, they don't want better for the country. These people have been marginalized for, for many years. That's why you have the likes of Uwazirike, Samanekpa, and Namde Kanu, whereby they get angry to the extent that they want to make, make sure they get Biafra by force because they are seeing the handwriting on the walls. Restricted to your states, when you look at federal government appointments, the Igbos have been lagging behind since democracy. It is very hard for you to say, call Igbo man, even for federal character, in a way, these people are ready not to give Igbo jobs, give Igbo opportunities to hold, to get, to, 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 to bid for businesses. Look at Dangote and Co. Look at Igbo to Cement. Look at what happens. They will intentionally frustrate an Igbo man not to succeed in Nigeria. And is it not safe for us to say that the Igbo man needs to vigorously fight for his exit from Nigeria? looking at the revelation of Shore and what some of us have experienced firsthand. If you're a graduate, there are some top jobs you, you will not be giving attention to. You know, you know, the politics that they play today is that most people, because they have, if you appoint a Yoruba man, Minister of Finance, eventually his Yoruba brothers are, will be the ones that will occupy that ministry. Looking at the tribalistic nature, looking at the hatred for the Igbo tribe. It is their brothers that they will, f f they will just flood them in that ministry. I told you something I experienced today. A Yoruba lady said he went, sh she went to a church, a redeemed church in Lagos. She went to a redeemed church in Lagos. And she went for the first time and he saw that Igbos were plenty there. Say no. If it's Igbos, I won't, I won't go to this church. So she was looking for a redeemed church that we have more of Yorubas. You can see the hatred. This is just a young girl of 15, 16 saying this thing. You can see the hatred they plant in their children. When you look at marriages, intermarriages between Igbo and Yoruba, you always see it between the sons and daughters. It's very rare for you to see an Igbo, Igbo boy get married to a Yoruba girl. It is either a Yoruba boy getting married to an Igbo girl. Because these people, their parents, tell them from little, avoid the Igbos. 
I don't want to get money from that family that's egos. I was born and bred in Lagos, so I know what I'm saying. First hand, there are some job opportunities you get. You get as an Igbo man, you don't stand a chance to even apply or even have a chance to even work in such organizations, except there's a federal character, except it's been owned by foreigners, and foreigners wants to be wants an Igbo person to be part of that company. If it's been occupied by Southwesterners, it is very difficult for an Igbo man to be well, man, to explore his skills and potentials in Nigeria. That's why you see they are relegated to just business, business, business. Because business is a one man thing, it's an entrepreneurial thing. You don't need to be connected to to do business. That's why you see these guys are relegated to business. We have many Igbos that are graduates that are well to do. We have many of them. But they don't have a chance at surviving in Nigeria today because of the hatred they have for the Igbo man. It is very, very, very uh, pathetic. And that is why we must get Biafra. It's a must. It's a do or die thing. No going back, whether you like it or not. I did a broadcast about Namdi Kanu giving federal government conditions why he should drop Biafra. Yes, that report is true. 2017, Namdi Kanu met with the Southeast governors and gave them conditions to drop Biafra. But looking at it, the Southeast governors, instead of dialoguing with Namdi Kanu, the next week or two weeks thereabout, armies showed up in Namdi Kanu's compound and kill over 20 something persons with the aim to even kill him because having that kind of attack that means there must be a, 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 an order to kill him after he Namdi Kanu says I will drop this agitation if you do this and this and this what was what is expected of the government to do is it not to listen to what he's saying and try and take steps but the next thing they wanted to do was to kill him that's why today there's no going back on Biafra you see any dialogue you are doing Nigeria cannot dialogue with Igbos. There's no, you cannot dialogue. The only solution now is that everybody will go their separate ways. That's the only solution. There's nothing other than that. That is why God is making sure that the North and the Southwest are having crisis and issues. They are clashing. They are having issues. Let the hatred deepen so that this country will get to regional system of government. I was discussing with one of my Yoruba friends this evening he said that he is into politics especially Lagos politics he said what he is seeing in politics Nigeria can never be better again so anybody you see coming online to say Nigeria is one just watch that person that person is not feeling fine it's not okay it's not well at all it's not well there's a secret memo that leaked according to Shore, and they're telling everybody be careful of egos that means there are positions they will not give to egos yeah, positions. I worked in a company. We just had like three or four Igbos in that company. The rest were Yorubas. But you know the funny thing? That Igbos were the ones that were excelling at what they did. They were committed and dedicated. Wherever you find an Igbo man, he, he always performs above his contemporaries. He always does better, much more than his contemporaries. That's why they envy them. The First Republic, we saw Igbos dominating most posts in the civil service and in the Nigerian government before the uh, Cardinal Zogu coup Igbos were here and there they were doing better they were even in the elite class for you to get married to an Igbo you need to get to a standard for you to get married to an Igbo man in the first republic this you need, you need to get to a standard you need to be educated you need to be able to have one degree or the other the Igbos were in the high-class society then, if you study history. But the gang up between the North and the Southwest, they envied these guys and they made sure that these guys never rise up again in Nigeria, which they are doing with politics and everything. That's why some people, when P2B came out, they made sure that they made sure that they made sure that P2B does not get to that presidency. They will spend anything they can spend to make sure that P2B and Igbo man does not get to that presidency. I have spoken with some men. I have spoken with some people. And you will come to understand that the hatred for the Igbo man is that they are afraid that the Igbo man might rise 
above every other tribe like they did in the first republic they're afraid in the company that i worked we were, we were, we were the high flyers the Igbos there we were, we were the high even though i was born in La in lagos and i behaved like yoruba i had this Igbo blood in me and we were doing much more better we are doing much more great than every other of every of our contemporaries we are at the top we are even leading at that point so that is the hatred so for the Igbos to survive this is a survival thing we need to survive for Igbos to survive in nigeria nigeria must break up this is what she said in a podcast hosted by uh, they call it the, they call it the honest bunch podcast hosted by nedu he said nigeria has an Igbo problem there's a secret memo in the government yes say for Igbo to man to survive in nigeria as it is currently put together nigeria must break there's a video to that respect Nigeria must break. But why is it that the politicians are calling for one Nigeria? Why is it that the Southeast politicians are also calling for one Nigeria? Don't you know that these guys don't believe that Nigeria is one? Don't you think so? You, don't you think that these guys, they, 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 they are just feeding from the, the, the diversity of opinions? They are just feeding from the disunity they are taking advantage of the fact that Nigeria is not united and they just position themselves there in the political class just cramping up all the monies enriching themselves and their family putting the average Nigerian in bondage I told somebody today that we have a class problem class now under Tunubu's regime the middle class have been erased we now have the richer richer the the the, the high class and the low class the class of the rich and the class of the poor so the class of the rich they remain united to fleece the country of its mineral resources to steal the country's resources and the revenue and what the country is producing be controlled by the rich and they give crumbs to the poor that is the problem nigeria has and amongst the rich people they limit they limit what they give to egos when you see that people who owns power plants and what have you who owns big companies almost most of the blue chips chip companies we have in nigeria today are owned by the yorubas most of the blue chip companies we have new generational companies we have today is owned by yorubas how do you think is that possible there is a deliberate attempt to make sure that they start ego Igbos that are entrepreneurs from getting to certain levels. Look at what Davido's father said when he was going to own his own power plant, that somebody was frustrating, told him that he will not get it. Not to talk of an Igbo person that goes to Abuja, I want to have a power plant. I have what it takes. How was Ibe to frustrated out of business by the powers that be? How are they trying so much to frustrate Diamond Bank? Diamond, um, I think Diamond Bank, yes who is owned by an Igbo man. So what is happening? There is a deliberate attempt. That is why, whether you people like it or not, an Igbo man would not stay in this kind of system. We must break the system and be free. We must survive. We can survive and we must survive. Nothing is stopping us. That's why I'm proud to be an IPOB. I'm proud to be associated with IPOB. Even though I'm not a member of that organization. But every woman is tagged an IPOB, a Biafran man. Whether you think that these guys know where they are going or not, whether they are educated or not, it is much more better than being a Nigerian. Being an IPOB is much more better than being a Nigerian. Do you know what a Nigerian means? Mumu goats. The a current in Nigeria currently, when you go on the streets, look at Nigerians. Frustrated people. They can't fight back. They are in bondage. The ruling class is ruining their lives, ruining their fam families, ruining their destinies. There's nothing they can do. They are slaves. But an IPOB man is fighting for his freedom. He's coming out to speak out. No, I don't want to be in this situation. I want out. But the Nigerian man is just helpless there.
doing nothing. They want Nigeria. What is your Shetima? His residence in Lagos, five billion naira used to revenue. See, after twenty one billion naira, on on that five billion naira, the federal government is spending for Shetima's house in Lagos. Where was Osiba just saying before? Where was Osiba saying be staying before? But because they know that Nigerians are goats, Nigerians don't have value in their eyes. They can spend monies anyhow and tell Nigerians to be patient. That is what they always tell Nigerians. During the election, I told some people, this petrol is not going down. It is going up and up. Dangote refinery does not stop the price of crude from going up, of petrol from going up. Old men with their white hair that have children, that I don't know what they will be telling their children, telling me that is a lie. See, an average Nigerian don't know his right, don't understand his right, and cannot take action on his right. When you see people criticize, sit at home, tell them, the government of Bola Mentunubu that has impoverished Nigerians, what are you doing to it? People are taking actions over marginalization, and you're angry with this, but you are there, your family members are going to bed without food, people are dying of hunger, people have lost hope. The government spends monies anyhow, do things anyhow. 185 Naira under Buhari's regime last year, it is 1,100 and so in some place, 1,500, some place, 2,000. And they're telling you that uh, you, 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 you can have an alternative of CNG and what have you. But an IPOB person is telling you that no, we are fighting for our rights. They are coming out to fight for our rights. You went for a protest. What happened? How far? Conquered, conquered people. Because I hate when people, when people are fighting for their rights, even though you think they are stupid, they are sending a message. We cannot be cowards and slaves like ordinary Nigerians. We want out of this system. This system is not going to benefit us and anything about us. Shore has come to say it several times over and over again, saying that Nigeria would will snuff the life out of Igbos if Nigeria continues to exist and Igbo man would, might not even live again. Because the hatred people have for an Igbo man is in the blood. So why not allow these people go? Why? So if Igbos needs to leave, Nigeria must break up. That's the message. No matter what, those Igbos that are fighting for one Nigeria, my brother, Nigeria is no one. Why are you fighting? Why are you people not okay? Why are you people just behaving? I don't understand. Nigeria cannot be one. Nigeria cannot be one. The leaders understand this. That's why when everybody enters, they will, they, is that is that they fulanize or they urbanize? And an Igbo man dare not try it because the Southwest we deploy the media against them. But we thank God that the media now belongs to the average person on the streets. The traditional media is losing their grip. They are losing their grip. They are losing their credibility. Look at what happened during the elections. Elon Musk to use the media to win elections for Donald Trump against the legacy media like CNN and all ABC, MSNBC and what have you. Somebody use social media. So now, news is being reported by the people. We thank God for that. But no matter what, we will continue to do broadcasts upon broadcasts and take actions to make sure that we change the system. We change the system. We will deploy every media that we can deploy. We will deploy every tactic that we can deploy to change the system so that an Igbo man can be able to breathe again in this Nigeria, the Nigeria of today, this one Nigeria of today, so that we can be able to breathe fresh air. We are suffocating. And we, the world is listening to us. We are saying it. We are suffocating. Let there be a change of the system. So, my people, that is it. I hope you guys had what uh, Aisha Yusuf, as well as this, our brother, said here. The truth is that the Nigerian government thought that they are oppressing Igbos by not, you know, allowing them to rule this country or, you know, giving them these uh, juicy positions or opportunities. But the truth is that 
the way Nigeria is right now, if you look at it very well, is because of the way they are treating Igbos. Yes, he may disagree, but truth is that since after the war, look at where Nigeria is right now. Is it where Nigeria is supposed to be? Even someone was saying that uh, instead of Igbo man to become a president, like let Tinubu rule forever, let them be suffering this suffer that it doesn't matter since Igbo person is not a president. So for you to see the mentality that what uh, Showare said is nothing but the truth. So Igbo is supposed to be aware of their position as well as what Nigeria have for them. So this is the reason why when people start agitating about this Biafra, don't say that they don't even know what they are doing because they are already fed up. So my people, I say, make I bring this update to you guys. I would love you guys to leave your thoughts in the comment section about what Aisha Suf said as well as this our brother and also please if today is your first time don't forget to subscribe like and share thank you everyone for your support and love i truly appreciate you all yes i will see you guys in my next update goodbye for now